The following sermon by Jonathan Edwards is called That Wicked Men Are the Children of the Devil. John 8 verse 44 Ye are of your father the devil. The Jews at the time of Christ's appearing in the world were not a free people, but had been subdued by the Romans and were under their yoke. They were in great expectation that the Messiah, when he came, would set them free again, and so again restore the kingdom unto Israel. Accordingly, Christ tells them in the 31st and 32nd verses of this chapter, that if they believed in him and continued in his word, they should be his disciples indeed, and should know the truth, and the truth should make them free. The freedom Christ meant was spiritual. The Jews in their great pride would not own that they were in bondage. They said they are Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that ye shall be made free? Having reference to the law which forbid any of the children of Israel to be sold for bondmen, Leviticus 25:42. But, however, Christ informed them that they were the worst of slaves for all their being Abraham's seed, and that they were servants to sin, as appeared in that they sought to kill him. He acknowledges that they are outwardly Abraham's seed, but intimates to them that they had another that was their father that was very different as to their spiritual part in the 38th verse. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. They again replied they had Abraham for their father. But Christ denies that they were spiritually the seed of Abraham, and that they did not do the works of Abraham, but tells them that they did do the works of him that was indeed their father. The 41st verse, You do the deeds of your father. But they did not understand who he meant, and they replied they were not born of fornication, and therefore could not be anything but the children of Abraham, and so the children of God. We have one Father, even God. Our Lord tells them that if God were their Father, they would love him, because he proceeded forth and came from God, and that he did not come of himself, but he sent him. But still they did not understand who he meant when he said they did the deeds of their father. Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? He therefore tells them plainly in our text that they were of their father, the devil. Doctrine. That wicked men are the children of the devil. Man was made at first with the image of God. And then he was, upon that account, as well as by his proceeding from God by immediate creation, the child of God. Luke 3, verse 38. Adam was the son of God, but since the fall the souls of men are dreadfully corrupted and depraved, which sin and corruption is venomously represented in the scripture. It is compared to the poison of dragons and cruel venom of serpents. And so wicked men are called a generation of vipers, that which is generated of a viper is still of the same venomous nature. Sometimes it is compared to death to signify the universal depravity and destituteness of all good, as well as to signify the awful and horrible nature and influence of that corruption. And in this place they are called the children of the devil, which is not the only place that wicked men are so called, but parallel to it is Matthew 13:38 The Jews are the children of the wicked one So Paul full of the Holy Ghost calls Elymas a sorcerer a child of the devil Acts 13 verse 10 And so wicked men in the Old Testament are called sons of Belial They are called the children of the devil upon these following accounts first as they proceed from him secondly as they are like him First, they are called the children of the devil upon the account of their proceeding from him. Wicked men proceed from the devil in these respects, with respect to the corruption of nature and sin, 
and with respect to those particular ways of sin which they are more especially devoted to. First, their hearts are wholly under the power of that corruption and depravity of nature which comes from the devil. They proceeded from the devil with respect to that which is their nature, that wholly influences and possesses them. Sin has become as much the nature of fallen men as poison and spitefulness is the nature of a serpent. But Satan is he that has introduced that nature. He is the old serpent that has poisoned mankind and made him of the same venomous nature with himself. In one sense, man alone was the author of his own sin and not the devil. Otherwise, it would not be his sin. That is, man by his own free and voluntary act committed the first sin and therefore destroyed the image of God and wholly corrupted his own nature. This was done without any compulsion from the devil. God did not so leave men to Satan's will as to suffer him to compel him to eat of the forbidden fruit. But yet Satan was the contriver of the business. He, by his own devilish subtlety, so ordered a temptation as to deceive man and attempt him to sin. God was not obliged to make man impeccable. He was under no obligation to create him so that it would have been utterly impossible for him to sin. When he created him, he gave him that freedom in which he was capable to act for himself, and according to his own determination, without any manner of compulsion. Being in the state, Satan contrived his destruction and craftily tempted and drew them into sin, whereby at once they lost all their original righteousness and their souls. And so the souls of all their posterity were become wholly possessed with sin and corruption. Secondly, they proceed from Satan with respect to their particular habits and ways of wickedness. Though all have the same corruption of nature, yet there is a great difference with respect to the particular ways of wickedness. Some are more especially under the prevailing exercise of one lust, and others of another. Some are notorious in one way of wickedness, others in another. Every man has his own iniquity. Some are more especially under the governing influence and prevailing exercise of pride. Others are under the influence of another prevailing sin. The devil is a diligent observer of men's particular tempers and constitutions and temperament of their bodies, and also of their circumstances, that he may set in with them and turn them to his own purposes. He observes what ways of sin and wickedness they, by temper and condition, are most exposed to. And there he will be most diligent with his temptations to draw them into such and such evil courses. There is no man is a drunkard, but in a sense the devil has made him so. There is no man who is an unclean person, but in so being he is a child of the devil. So proud and malicious men, covetous worldlings, unjust and deceitful backsliders and revilers, they are as they are because the devil has begotten them. Thus the Jews, they were the children of the devil, and being out of a murderous disposition and seeking to kill Christ, and in rejecting and hating the truth of the gospel, as in the words following the text in the same verse. So Elymas was a child of the devil, in that he was a sorcerer, Acts 13, verse 10. The devil has different ways of bodily possession. We read of a dumb devil, of an unclean devil, of a spirit of infirmity, so there is different ways of mental possession. There is a proud devil and a malicious devil and a drunken devil and an unclean devil. The devil is a liar and the father of it. He is the father of lies. So he is the father of the children of sin. And thirdly, as to particular acts of sin. Number two. They are the children of the devil in being like the devil. The sameness or likeness of nature always comes into the scripture notion of sonship. Christ is the Son of God because he proceeds both from the Father, but is the same nature with the Father. So Adam begat a son in his own likeness. So they are called the children of Abraham that are like Abraham, that are of the faith of Abraham, and so do the works of Abraham. Thus Christ argues in the context, in the 39th verse, 
If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. So in the verse of the text, he argues that they are the children of the devil because they did the lusts of the devil. The devil was a murderer, and so are they in that they sought to kill Christ. The devil was a liar, and so were they, inasmuch as they would not believe him because he told them the truth. They are like the devil, first, in that they are under the government of lusts and corruptions of the same kind. They are of the same wicked nature. There is the same agreement of nature between Satan and wicked men as there is between the old serpent or viper and his young ones. There is the very same principle of enmity against God, the same principles of pride, of malice, and revenge. Wicked men are of a devilish nature in these things. And although there is a difference with respect to sinful lusts, these wicked men have which the devil has not, but this only arises from the difference of condition. Man dwells in a body and the devil does not. Number two. There is also an agreement and likeness with respect to the greatness of the corruption. Not that wicked men are as bad as the devil in all respects. Here, therefore, it may be worth the while to show briefly wherein is the agreement and wherein is the difference. They agree in this. First, that wicked men are as absolutely destitute of any manner of principle of real goodness as the devil is. Man, by the fall, did as wholly lose the image of God and his original righteousness as the devil did by his fall. The heart of man is naturally as destitute of any principle of love to God, as spiritual knowledge or any inclination to any spiritual good as the devil is. The Holy Spirit upon the fall of man did as wholly forsake and abandon the heart of man, as to his indwelling there, as it did the angels when they fell. And therefore it follows, secondly, that the corruption is an universal corruption. Corruption does as totally possess the heart of man as the heart of a devil. That is, there is no power or faculty but what is wholly corrupted and perverted, wholly to the purposes of sin. For what hinders when all grace and holiness is wholly gone as much in man as in the devil? But this corruption should as universally prevail. Corruption both in man and in devils arises from the prevailing of natural principles of self-love. When those spiritual principles were gone, which restrained them and kept them within their proper bounds, and those principles being as totally gone in man as in devils, it will follow that the remaining natural principles which now become corruption will as universally prevail. But herein lies the difference, number one, that the devil is a being of greater capacity than man is, and therefore when sin and corruption wholly possesses him, he must be proportionally more wicked. They are like vessels of different capacity. They are both full of sin, but the largest vessel has the most sin. As the angels in their primitive state were more noble and excellent creatures than man, so when they fell and were corrupted, they became so much the more odious. When greater powers and more extensive faculties are ill-set and engaged in wickedness, that being is more wicked than one of less capacities that is as universally corrupted. By how much the greater the capacity of any being is, he is capable of so much the more holiness or more wickedness. The sin of the devil is so much the more aggravated and is also so much the greater exercise because it has greater powers to exercise itself by. Sin exercises itself only by the natural faculties. Therefore, so much the greater and more powerful those faculties are, so much the mightier is the exercise of corruption. Number two. The sin and corruption of the devil has habitually a greater exercise than in most, and probably than in any man. In this respect, we see a vast difference amongst themselves. Although all are alike corrupt by nature, yet some by continued habit are vastly more wicked than others. The devil's first sin was abundantly worse than man's. It was an open, proud, malicious rebellion against God and a direct design of setting up himself in opposition to him against the clear light of heaven. It was very much of the same nature as a sin against the Holy Ghost. And what he did in that rebellion has set his heart 
in that way ever since. He is always more in the exercise of malice and proud revenge against God. He began with open war, and he has maintained it ever since. One overt act of sin may have a vast influence upon the mind of man to dispose and incline him that way to the like exercises of sin. If a person have once committed fornication, or if a person have once been guilty of some very bold and daring act of profaneness, it's a lead to further acts. It sets corruption in motion. Number three, man has restraining grace, the devil has none. The devil has not those restraints from hope and from fear concerning a future state, or from education, from examples, from temporal interests, and from strivings and awakenings of God's spirit. God has so ordered the state of mankind that wickedness should be greatly restrained in this world. Application number one. Hence we may learn the reason why many are carrying on the same designs and are engaged in the same interest as the devil. They seek to overthrow the interest of religion. They seduce others. They prove tempters. They hinder men's salvation, endeavoring to discourage them. They'll ridicule religion. Many industriously spread and propagate errors. The reason is they are his children. He has begotten them. They are the spawn of the old serpent. It is no wonder that they are therefore, that they do the lusts of their father, and that they seek what he seeks and are under his government. No wonder they list themselves under his banner and fight for him in opposition to God and Christ, to whom he is a grand enemy. Number two. By this doctrine all awakened sinners may be convinced of the great vileness and wickedness of their own hearts. You that are sensible of your danger of hell and are seeking salvation, you may hereby be convinced of your own great unworthiness of it, and that God is not obliged to have any gracious respect to you for anything in you. For what excellency is there in a child of the devil as you are, and are so called in the word of God? Till you are converted, you have a heart like the heart of a devil, you have a nature like his. For all, you are ready to look upon yourself as having done many good things. You read and pray and have done many good works and often find religious affections. And it seems to you that they are things that God should take notice of and have respect to. But God doesn't think of you as you think of yourself. He sees and knows for all these things the devil is your father. You are one of his children. For all these fair shows, that gilded outside, you have the poison of asps within. You are one of the generation of vipers, though you don't see it yourself. Yet your heart is indeed of the like venomous nature with that old serpent. And will it be any wondering if God doesn't accept the prayers and the works of such an one? The devil would pray too as earnestly as you if he thought he could get out of hell by it. He prayed earnestly when Christ was on earth for fear of being tormented. He fell down and cried out with a loud voice, I beseech thee, Luke 8, 28. You do it all only from self-love, and your doing as you do doesn't argue that you have any more real goodness than the devil himself. See and own, therefore, that it would be just with God to hate and loathe you and curse you and damn you for all that you are or have done. For God does no injustice in damning the devil and his children. Number three. The third use is of awakening to ungodly men. By this doctrine you may be made sensible of the dolefulness of your condition. Here consider first that you are the children of the devil. That God looks upon you with abhorring and displeasure as he does upon the devil. The devil is God's grand enemy, and God is and will be everlastingly his enemy. He therefore cast him down from heaven with indignation, without any mercy, into the bottomless pit. It has bound him in chains of darkness to the judgment of the great day. The devil feels the wrath of Almighty God day and night, and expects it more dreadfully. And all his children are by God looked upon with a like loathing and anger. God is angry with the wicked every day, both in sleeping and waking, sitting down and rising. God's anger still burns against them.
Number two, the children of the devil are in the devil's possession. He has a possession of the hearts of all his sons and daughters now, and their souls and bodies will be entirely in his possession hereafter. In a little while, the devil shall have his own. God will leave them, the devil will seize upon them as his, and will hold them forever. They shall fall into his hands, and they will not have a very merciful father of him. Number three. If you are the children of the devil, you will doubtless be involved with your father in his destruction. The devil and his children God will put together. They will have the same habitation. They shall be one miserable company. They shall be treated alike at the day of judgment. They shall stand together and they shall be turned away together into the same everlasting fire. And will be looked upon with the same abhorrence to all eternity by the saints and angels. Number four, how much will your parentage be to your shame? Now you are not ashamed of it. You hold up your head boldly, but you will come to be exposed in the world to see the image of Satan, the badge of his fathership. Therefore, in the fourth place, be exhorted by all means to turn from sin and Satan unto God. Strive to be delivered from that corruption of nature which proceeded from him and which is his image. Mortify your lust. Don't any longer do the lusts of your father. Forsake those sinful ways which you have been led into by Satan. Resolve that you will hearken no more to his temptations. Nor don't hearken to his instruments. If you haven't a mind to live and die a child of Satan, and to be in his possession forever, cast off his yoke of bondage. Forsake his ways and come to Jesus Christ for deliverance. For he came into the world to destroy the works of the devil and to deliver those miserable souls from his possession. Choose God for your father. Trust in him and beg for a childlike spirit towards him. The Sermon Wicked Men are Children of the Devil Jonathan Edwards Undated Manuscript Preached before 1733 Stillwater's Revival Books is now located at PuritanDownloads.com. It's your worldwide online Reformation home for the very best in free and discounted classic and contemporary Puritan and Reformed books, MP3s, and videos. For much more information on the Puritans and Reformers, including the best free and discounted classic and contemporary books, MP3s, digital downloads, and videos, please visit Stillwater's Revival Books at PuritanDownloads.com. Stillwater's Revival Books also publishes the Puritan Hard Drive, the most powerful and practical Christian study tool ever produced. All thanks and glory be to the mercy, grace, and love of the Lord Jesus Christ for this remarkable and wonderful new Christian study tool. The Puritan Hard Drive contains over 12,500 of the best Reformation books, mp3s and videos ever gathered onto one portable Christian study tool. An extraordinary collection of Puritan, Protestant, Calvinistic, Presbyterian, Covenanter, and Reformed Baptist resources. It's fully upgradable and it's small enough to fit in your pocket. The Puritan hard drive combines an embedded database containing many millions of records with the most amazing and extraordinary custom Christian search and research software ever created. The Puritan hard drive has been produced to assist you in the fascinating and exhilarating spiritual, intellectual, familial, ecclesiastical, and societal adventure that is living the Christian life. It has been specifically designed so that you might more faithfully know serve and love the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as to help you to do all you can to bring glory to his great name. If you want to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, then the Puritan hard drive is for you. Visit PuritanDownloads.com today for much more information on the Puritan hard drive and to take advantage of all the free and discounted Reformation and Puritan books, MP3s, and videos that we offer at Stillwater's